Hello chess friends and welcome to you out of chess channel and welcome back to our Stockfish system brutality tour that we have followed now for the last couple of weeks. In this period we have seen so many beautiful games played by Stockfish. We have seen so many great games in which Stockfish won its games with the black pieces in classical openings like the Sicilian defense, uh, Rui Lopez, uh, Italian game, really the healthy openings that I would suggest you to play if you're maybe searching for an opening choice uh, with the black pieces. But we have seen also fast winning games in which for instance in one particular game, Stockfish destroys his opponent in only 26 moves, which is also crazy when you think about it. Harden in top uh, engine level that someone can destroy um, someone in only 26 moves is really, really crazy idea. Uh, but also, for instance, yesterday we have seen a beautiful Evans Gambit in which Stockfish destroyed his opponent Coivisto in really, really uh, beautiful, spectacular way. But today we have our highlight of our brutality tour here by Stockfish 16. Today we'll see the fish playing the impossible opening today we we'll see the fish playing the king's gambit accepted and this will not be one of those soft king's gambit approaches there are many sidelines of course you can go even more positionally into the game no today we'll see the so-called wild mozio gambit in which stockfish will sacrifice a piece in an early stage of the game but then will build amazing amazing attacking formations amazing attacking flow in my opinion really one of the best chess games that i've seen in my life so let's see now what happened its opponent was uh, the top engine fire with the white pieces the fish open with move e4 fire's response was e5 and now we have the king's gambit and now king's gambit accepted this is the way to go now we have already a tactical collision the pawn structure is unbalanced this is really an epic epic tactical opening so knight to f3 played by the fish we have a g5 supporting the pawn bishop to c4 g5 g4 and now king side casting here by stockwell 16 this is now the so-called wild Muzio gambit in which a white is sacrificing the piece but uh here after move queen to f3 we can notice that White is really a beautiful activity. White is also fast development, has already secured the king by Calton, has also this queen and rook battery on the F-file. And now the next couple of moves, I think, are very easy to find for White. White will play d3, knight to c3, bishop takes f4, maybe even knight to d5 if the position allows it. So for the lost piece, I think White has a good compensation of piece activity. On the other hand, Black has, of course, the extra piece, but has now problems how to develop the pieces, where to develop the pieces, on which side even to castle. And maybe you ask also sometimes uh, yourself the question, if you play with the black pieces, should I even stay with the king in the center in this types of structure? So many, many questions have to be answered now by black. White is, as I said, playing now in a more natural way because white simply knows which moves are you going to make in the next couple of moves so in my opinion this becomes now really really a beautiful beautiful opening line queen to f6 was played by uh by the fire engine we have d3 fixing the structure hitting also uh the pawn on f4 you don't want to play of course queen to f4 if you trade off the queens then the attack is splashing and black in defender's position it's game over for white bishop to c5 by fire uh getting an attack against the king king to h1 and now knight to e7 Okay, this was maybe uh, a dubious line. Maybe I've also analyzed this line, 90c6. But again, it doesn't seem to me that this move is helping black out so much. For instance, after 90c6, we can play bishop to f4. And now many things can happen. Let's see maybe this line, knight to d4. If you play knight to d4 here from black's perspective, then the issue is here this one. Queen to h5 hits the bishop now on c5. You can maybe try knight to c2, knight to c3. Okay, you pick up uh, also the rook on a1 now, but now look at this. Knight to d5 is coming into the game. You're trying, of course, to trade off the queens again. You're desperate. You're trying really to simplify the game somehow. But now knight to c7, look at this. King to d8, queen to c5. Also, king to have a uh, queen to have eight is immediately a checkmate threat, so this is not working. So let's go back after move knight to c6 and the bishop to f4. You can also play, of course, knight to e5, but the issue is this one after bishop to e5, queen to e5. You can play, of course, bishop to f7, but even a better approach after move bishop to uh, e5. Pardon me, after knight to e5, here is to play even queen to e2, not immediately trade off the pieces, keeping more pieces uh, on the board. Now after something like d6, now we pick up uh, here the piece and now again uh, c3 can happen. d4 is the threat. Again, bishop to f7, knight to d2, uh, knight to f3 will eventually come into the game. Again, I think black is facing many, many tactical problems. So here after move king to h1, that's why, as we said, knight to e7 was played by uh, here the fire engine, knight to c3. You see, 
it's very easy now for white to make move because we are simply playing now on the maximum activity of the pieces on fast development on simply the most active squares on the board so uh, black has to actually find the best moves in order to defend this aggressive uh, position by white we have d6 let's see now what happens if you try c6 i've analyzed this move because it seemed to me that this could be a natural idea preventing maybe this hop of the knight on d5 because you see now in the later stage of the game that this move knight to d5 will have a tactical tactical problem in black's position so that's why i've analyzed also this move c6 i searched really here for opportunities for black how to defend this position after move c6 actually this is the issue e5 can happen immediately look at this queen to e5 now we play bishop to f7 really wild stuff you play king to f7 now look at this bishop to f4 hits the queen you're trying of course to keep uh, your queen on the f but now look at this knight to e4 uh, you play maybe something at like queen to f5 look at this g4 again you step back knight to c5 again you have to step back with the queen and now you will get your discovered check uh, when we move the bishop from the f file we have this amazing rook and queen battery on the f file in my opinion this is game over here for uh, for black for sure. So after move knight to c3, what you do? That's why d6 played by uh, the fire engine. Stockfish simply took now the pawn on f4. We have knight to c6 and now comes as i said this very important move and in the beginning it seems so that this is nothing spectacular what stockfish is doing stockfish is playing now the move knight to d5 a natural move as i said in the beginning that this move will come but this move makes black already react and black is already already huge tactical problems look at this after move knight to d5 you have to play knight to d5 because the queen is hanging and also the pawn on c7 is hanging so after move knight to d5 now comes e takes d5 and the issue is now for black here that you cannot activate uh, your knight here on d4 this is not working if you play something like this then look at this rook from uh, a to e1 is going to happen and where are you going to go with your king if you play something like king to f8 then bishop to uh, h6 is simply winning on spot if you play of course queen to h6 we have immediately the checkmate on f7 if you step back with your king on g uh, g8 here then rook to uh, e8 is also an amazing checkmate here by white so let's go back after move knight to d4 and uh, rook to e1 you can also play of course here rook to d8 um hiding with your king here behind the pawn on d6 but now look at what happens queen to h5 with the threat to play bishop to g5 trapping the queen you could maybe try key, uh, rook to g8 in order to defend the position like this but now look at this bishop to e5 again discover attack again white is using the attack on the f file you can maybe try it on d takes e5 with take or if you play here something like queen to g6 in order to get out of this mess then look at this bishop to f6 comes beautiful into the game uh, king to d7 now rook to e7 we have now even this windmill tactic again you have to play king to d7 and now queen to h3 is winning on spot you can just cover now with the knight to f5 rook to f5 and again we're threatening an amazing windmill tactic it's game over here for black really really wild stuff after e takes d5 the issue is now that you have to uh, step back with your knight here on e7 and this was the move that uh here uh, the fire engine played we have now rook from a to e1 anyway and now if you try even here to play queen to b2 this wasn't played in the game but i wanted to show you how very really tactically rich this position is you can guess what probably would have happened here stockers would probably immediately play the move rook to e7 really wild stuff after king to e7 bishop to g5 you can cover bishop to f6 look at this queen to h3 we don't we don't want to even take out the queen doesn't matter we want to deliver checkmate now the queen is again coming now come bishop to b2 comes with a direct threat against the king and now after a couple more moves black is losing the game on spot really really wild stuff so after move rook from a to e1 you cannot just care for one pawn you have to now def the defend the position somehow we have now rook to g8 now we have c3 uh, here played by stockfish bishop to g4 here good move i think also good defensive move by uh, fire trying to somehow get the queen out of the game we have queen to e4 stockfish stays on the e file it's not allowing of course black to castle if that happens then uh, of course the knight will be lost so black is basically trying to keep this extra piece on the board bishop to f5 again the threat against the queen queen drops back on e2 again a new threat here fire is hoping maybe to get a perpetual draw but now stockfish drops back here to d2 and now comes one of the critical moments but i still think that this position is already very very messed up for black even if you play maybe the top suggested move by stockfish here 
queen side chaos in it's not working i think here look at this we play simply d4 we kick away the bishop and now after bishop to uh e5 again we have this motif the discovered attack against the queen now we can play d takes e5 you lose the queen of course if you again play queen to g6 then bishop to f6 is spinning the knight and you can maybe just prolong the game by playing the move knight to f5 we take stakes and okay here in this scenario black would eventually have two minor pieces for the rook but we have to say this bishop on uh, on b6 is simply out of game so we cannot really evaluate this piece that it's playing and white is already a brutal activity with both of these rooks white will also eventually get here the bishop on d3 will play queen to f4 and similar stuff so in my opinion although this could be playable sometimes that you have two minor pieces against a rook but not in this particular position because white's attack is i think still still very very aggressive here against black's king so after move queen to d2 that's why queen to g7 was played here um the fire engine tried to do something here on the on the g file but it's not working now we have again this idea d4 bishop drops back h3 kicking with the bishop and now rook to e3 simply trying to build a battery now uh with both of his rooks on on the e file queen to g6 we have queen to e2 and now in this particular moment uh the game was i think already already over we're now in move 21 and it's almost immediately losing here on spot for black because look at this stockfish of course grabs simply uh the knight on e2 what are you going to do many many problems already in the position first of all let's count pawns here obviously white is up a pawn when we also watch the pawn structure white is of course a much much healthier pawn structure because these are weaknesses and when we watch also the activity of white's pieces also white is much much better here rook very active rook on this file attacking this one this bishop is blocked out so maybe in in a different universe this could be a draw position but with so many uh, elements in white favor i think this is completely completely lost game here for black after move rook to e7 we have rook to e8 competing of course on the e file stockfish takes uh fire takes and now queen to f3 nothing dramatically changes the position this is still a messed up game here for black king to b8 bishop to d3 f5 king uh improves here the position on h2 a6 and now rook to f2 we have a5 bishop to g3 rook to f8 and now rook to e2 here um uh, the fire engine even lost the battle now on the e file f4 is never a possibility because of the bishop's activity against the queen here fire tried to battle with the move uh, rook to f7 but now queen to f4 we have queen to g8 and now rook to e3 we have queen to h8 so here black is simply zugzwang black doesn't have really a good move black is waiting maybe for white to somehow open the position because white has to uh, pardon me black has to keep the position somehow black is waiting black is waiting for its death here i think uh, because white can only win the game uh maybe in as i said in different universe this could be somehow a draw position but not with this amazing peace activity by by white so stockfish continues with b3 we have a4 but now b4 locking further out uh this bishop on b6 really really a bad piece king to a7 bishop to f2 rook to a uh, king to a8 bishop to e2 we have now h6 to c okay black is playing this tiny little moves but there's simply no improvement of anything here in black's position meanwhile stockfish improves the pieces activates them further bishop to h4 rook to g7 bishop to f3 uh bishop to c8 and now after bishop to f6 we have this idea uh here the fire engine is losing the exchange queen to f6 and now rook to a8 pins of course also the bishop here uh black's pieces are stuck we have bishop to uh, bishop to a7 we have rook takes c8 we have here this idea bishop to bd8 but now after move queen to f1 this is game over queen to uh, b5 is going to happen then queen to a5 or queen to a4 is winning the game on spot in the game queen to g5 was played we have queen to uh, b5 here uh, fire tried a couple of checks but now after bishop to f1 stockfish covered the first rank and after queen to f1 in this particular position uh the fire engine resigned Pooh really really wild stuff uh, how the fish is playing the game even a uh, king's gambit is a possibility here uh, when the softish engine is playing uh, theory here i'm not sure what to say this is simply sick brutal chess 
chess from another dimension. Uh, yesterday we saw the Evans Gambit, today we saw the King's Gambit. Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe we'll see also the Truxler Counter Gambit playing by Stoffish. I'll check it out. Uh, maybe there is one on the CCRL uh, Beautiful Chess website. I'll check it out. If there is maybe a game in the Truxler Counter Gambit, we'll analyze it for sure. But so far, you see, Stockfish can still play the Romantic Era chess opening so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really, really enjoyed a lot interesting ideas of this wild muzio gambit of the king's gambit theory if you want to see more beautiful sharp tactical games like this check out our comment the chess games play by computer series here's the link of our playlist and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what do we say chess is the best of course